My name is Stephen Rose. I'm on the um, I'm a product uh, um, product marketing manager for Microsoft Teams. I've been at Microsoft for 14 years. Uh, I specifically focus in on supporting our IT pro audience and all the things that they do. And I spent many years before that um, doing such. But I love. I've worked on Windows, OneDrive, Office, Surface on a variety of products and. It has been most exciting when I came over to Teams about a year and a half, two years ago, and working on this product has just been um, absolutely amazing. And, you know, I know we're going to talk about accessibility today. And as someone who is neurodiverse, who has a daughter who's also neurodiverse, who has dyslexia and dyscalculia, some of the things that we're bringing into all of our products and especially into Teams, I think really um, is very exciting on how we're approaching accessibility, neurodiversity, and inclusion as part of that. Fantastic. So for the benef uh, benefit of everyone who um, is joining us today, we're not going to have a presentation today. We're going to have more of a discussion uh, between myself, Stephen, and Ben. Um, and I think we've got lots of interesting questions that I hope we can uh, we can talk through today. So I guess I'll kick things off if that's okay. So please. To start things off, Stephen, the Microsoft Ignite conference, it was just two weeks ago, I believe. So can you tell us about some of the exciting things that were released uh, released there in terms of accessibility? Yeah, there's a lot of features and functionality which we've been rolling out throughout the year. So it was a great chance to catch up as well as announce some new things. So over the past year in Teams, some things that we've rolled out is real-time transcription, um, which is just such a great feature because it not only allows you during the um, during the meeting to be able to read and see what everybody is saying, but also to be able to go back and you can just search and look for that part of the conversation that you were looking for. Also, with all recordings and stream, you can also do the same thing. If you have problems understanding a portion, you could type in a word or when your name was called out go, and it will take you right to that moment in the recording and you can read and see everything that happened. And that's that's really great. The other thing that we've done is through, you know, PowerPoint uh, about a year or so ago, we brought in um, live translation and transcription, where during a PowerPoint, you can turn on subtitles and that can be in any language. But I've also used these when I've talked to audiences where English is a, a second language. Uh, when I was in India, when I have been in Finland and, you know, all these different places to be able to turn that on so that everybody could read what I'm saying in their own language. Our transcription levels, our AI levels are extremely high. And with all the people using it, we're well into the mid to high 90% for translation. And when there's a word it doesn't know, it'll do it generally in English. And it's usually because it's an industry specific term, but we're constantly learning because that information is sent to the cloud, translated, we don't keep it and then we send it back down. But words that we don't know, we add to a library and that continues to build out that library. So we're not taking anything whole conversations, but we're taking those things that we don't know. So bringing that in, the ability to right click a PowerPoint during a presentation and have it translated into your own language in real time, all of these are features that we're doing. But I think, you know, out of all the cool new stuff, and I'll talk about Mesh in a moment, which I think is something that's really exciting, are some of the really simple things that people have realized during the pandemic. I think one of my favorite comments from a customer was a few weeks ago we did a show with polaris they make snowmobiles and motorcycles and all this really cool stuff and the cio was uh, on the show and he said i love the folk that the fact that folks can chat during meetings what do you mean he goes well in real life you can't have people talking and having little side conversations during a meeting it's distracting but what I love is in Teams, you can do this. And what's great is not only does it show you that people are engaged and excited, but those people who would not speak out at a meeting for a variety of reasons are now engaging, are now becoming part of the conversation and are now um, doing that, whether it's vision or hearing or neurodiversity or learning abilities, any of those, they're able to do that. On top of that, we have built in features into um, Viva, which are very, very focused in on mental health. It will tell you, you know what? You have too many meetings this week. 
I'm going to help you automatically book in some slots for you to sit down and for you to take a break. Uh, do you want to do some breathing exercises? Do you just want to book in time to do email or take a break? At the end of the day, it will ask you, how are you feeling? Are you feeling overwhelmed? And all of this is aggregated up to management. One of, um, one of the most interesting things that we saw was management was looking at feedback where it doesn't it doesn't talk about you. It says, here's a manager and here's all the people, the group sales that works under this manager. So nobody can see your information. You get a daily or weekly update that says, here's how you did, here's your amount of free time, here's people to reconnect with. But one of the things that our management saw was um, early in COVID that we were doing five days worth of work in four days because we were always on, because people were connecting later at night and in the morning and that some managers were sending out emails late. So they've now made Friday a meeting free day. They say Fridays are no meetings. That's your day to get caught up. If you choose to build do a meeting, if other people don't want to accept it, too bad. That's just the way it is and you need to get on that. And the fact that we've seen that managers change how they work to not send email out after certain hours and to be aware of end users mental health when there's too much stress and what they can do to relieve that is really key because we saw depression overwork and that always on people feeling that they needed to work really dealt into a lot of mental health issues which we look at as part of accessibility and it really helps management to better understand where people are at emotionally and mentally as well as physically to really help and ensure that they have a good work style. So I think those, plus we announced a new feature called Mesh, um, which allows basically avatar, you in an avatar form to be able to connect, let's say if you can't go to a conference, to be able to meet up with people at that virtual event and have one-to-one -one conversations. And because we've made them just torsos and heads, everybody's at the same level. It could be how we see ourselves and nobody's taller or shorter or in a wheelchair or whatever. Everybody's at that same level. And of course, with all of our accessibility features, we have high, you know, low resolution, different color, all of that to make sure that people can have the most equal experience when using our products as possible. So I know I just threw a lot into a short period, but we we've, we've done so much over the past year and it's been such a focus for us and now bringing it to Viva. Um, you know, bringing in Mesh and all of the functionality that we brought into Teams to create a more equal experience um, has been really exciting and is something that I've been able to really leverage myself over the past year. Wow, that's, that's so good. Thank you, Stephen. And don't worry mm -hmm. about kind of throwing all that information. I think that's that's what we kind of do with the webinars. They're kind of very much lightning talks and lightning presentations. So uh, yeah, and it's it's so difficult to try and get all that information in. Um, ben, I've got a few questions, but Ben, did you have anything that you wanted to ask Stephen? Yeah, well, yeah. Was, I mean, I I love the captioning and transcription tools in Teams. I think they're they're game changing. Uh, one thing I was really interested in is how how you get it to be so accurate accurate and how do you keep improving it what is the process for the artificial intelligence that allows you to make those improvements it's all magic it's little elves and <laughs> magic. <laughs> no, i think you know we play with everything internally we have a variety of programs like our insider for office and windows and private previews and then we have a lot of programs that I mean, we have 150,000 employees around the world that start to play with this on the inside. And then we have customers who are dying for this, who play with it as part of previews. And then we have our insiders. And if you're a member of our insiders, you get our software first and often test features. And part of that is you're gonna give that feedback and you're gonna do it. We have an amazing Microsoft Most Valuable Professional Community, which is tens of thousands of real world experts that don't work for Microsoft all over the world who are also playing with this and giving feedback. Our goal is to make sure that whatever information we collect is private and we don't share it and that we don't tag it directly to you. But we're also looking at how you use our products and which features you're using and always looking for feedback that helps us to improve it. So it's a variety of ways that respects your privacy at all times. That's always first, um, but also allows us to grow and make sure that we're getting that level of accuracy in every language and every dialect that we need it to be. I know it's not the most specific answer, but it does give you from a high level. I didn't oh, mean to make that sound like a marketing answer, but but it is all about the security and privacy at the top level. But we have a ton of programs 
anybody can go to insiders, uh, you know, type in Office Insiders, Windows Insiders, Teams Insiders, and you'll get links where you can sign up for those programs and see features first, but we're going to get your feedback from it to make sure that it works. You mentioned um, training in there as well along yeah. the way. Uh, it's um, you, I believe in Microsoft you have your kind of an online training suite. If, we have tons you. of online training stuff. Uh, I'll throw out three really great links for people. The first one is obviously for accessibility. We have Microsoft.com slash accessibility in which if you break it down we talk about how we're not only committed to accessibility for everybody but we break it down by all of our vision hearing uh related tools and i'm looking at it right here off the page neurodiversity um learning mobility health and assistive tools accessibility in in 11 and microsoft 365 and i love the surface accessibility kit that they brought out a few months ago to make surface better we have a special controller for xbox for people that have limited movement and things along that line so there's a lot there for adoption and training we really kind of have two areas our first area is adoption.microsoft.com we really see adoption as the step before deployment of any tool because it goes into here's the resources, how to get a change champion, how to understand where people's pain points are in their role and all how to build training portals for your own company out of that. And then we, of course, on our docs.microsoft.com have our MS Learn platform, which is step-by-step -step guided training for end users and IT professionals that people can go into and there are click-through demos and also you can get um, demo environments that you can do walkthroughs and you can practice in and turn on all those features that you would want to turn on and test. So there's a wide variety based on what folks are looking for that will allow them to get in early, see how it's going to affect or benefit their end users, and then plan accordingly. Great, thank you. Um, I've got so many questions I'd like to ask you today, but I think we're probably going to run out of time. Um, I guess one question I'd like to to ask, and I know that we're kind of preaching to the converted with everyone that's watching the video, because they obviously have an interest in it, which is fantastic. But do you have any tips on how we can get people to kind of think of accessibility the same way that people use spell check, for example? That's great. Uh, I know we do a lot of things like when you put in a picture, it'll prompt you for an alt tag once you drop it into Teams or into Word or into anything that you're doing. Uh, as part of our editor, there is an accessibility checker that will go through. That's something we used to have in PowerPoint that would do accessibility for slides, but it will go through anything that you're creating uh, and do that. And now we've added some AI features, which actually now is you're typing uh, and you're adding someone, you know, if you're talking about a presentation, it'll just link that presentation right there. It will drop those people in. But I encourage people to click that editor button before they send off that long email, that wrap up, uh, whatever it is, and click that and look at accessibility because it will tell you, hey, some of these words are not going to work. Uh, you've used things that are not he, she, and you're using guys or things along that line. It will look at pictures and colors and fonts and all of those things and tell you this may not give everybody the equal level as they go to read it and in doing that it's going to change the tone and the context if somebody cannot read it see it view it or interpret it to the level that you expect and that's really important because i'm one of those people that you know i love teams and i love technology but if somebody sends me a text twice i'm going to get up and i'm either going to go to their office and go talk to them or i'm going to pick up a phone and call them because Things can be misinterpreted. The difference between writing something and saying something is so dramatic when you see their face and you hear emotion and you're able to understand when that person's not understanding what you're saying for various reasons and to change your approach. So I think as great as technology gets, there's nothing that replaces human interaction and human touch. And I encourage everybody to do that because it will make everything else we're doing better. And I know I'm a technology company saying that, but it's <laughs> true. You know, I, I, I completely agree. So I think Microsoft doing a really lovely job of helping to raise the profile of accessibility in terms of mainstreaming. I, I, I know there's a lovely feature I discovered in Outlook that means you can encourage other people to send you accessible stuff. So it's not just yeah. about you creating accessible stuff, but you're propagating that good practice throughout your organization. I yeah, think that's absolutely. that's absolutely spot on, Ben. I was about to say the same thing. I think that Stephen, you you were bang on with with what you were saying there. First, in terms of kind of 
that the email side of it, we all send so many emails. You know, we all think about, uh, you know, what we're putting on a VLE now. I think, well, I hope we do in terms of kind of is it accessible and stuff like that. But I think so many people now are forgetting about the kind of the email side of it, you know, the communication with students or, or you know, whoever it is, colleagues, things like that. And it's, I think that's one area that I think people can really kind of step up on. So I think I think that's a great shout. And certainly with the kind of the sending multiple communication via email and text and interpreting that the wrong way. Um, we actually had a talk on that uh, or kind of along those lines from Professor Phil Race at a previous webinar. And he said exactly this. He was saying that, you know, sometimes you write something and then you can read it in one of two ways. You can read it in a happy voice or you can read it right. in a bad voice. So if you're having a bad day, you're going to read that email in, in a slightly bad tone. So. I think yeah. getting up and going to see someone and kind of yeah is 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 a very important story so yeah, yeah very think, true th think about the response you're getting and if you're going what call visit mm. talk if it's not making sense then there's that disconnect and rather than propagating that and making it worse all the spell checkers all the ai tools in the world isn't going to fix that but it's doing that and understanding that people do have disabilities and some of them are invisible with me, uh, you know, I have ADD, I have ADHD. Um, I have learned, and it's gotten worse as I've gotten older. When I got into my 50s and mid 50s, it got worse. I got diagnosed. You're not 50. I, I'm 55, <laughs> actually. But I, I almost lost my job because I didn't realize how they were affecting me, and I got therapy and medication. And like I said, in dealing with my daughter who had anxiety and, and issues, I've learned a lot, and I feel. I don't want to say comfortable, but I'm good with sitting down with certain people and saying, hey, I have these issues. So if I'm not hearing you, if I'm not listening, say to me, I don't think you're hearing everything I'm saying. Let's take a break. Let's come back to this in an hour. Why don't you go, you know, get some water, take, take a break, go do something, shift your brain uh, and go do that. And being aware that not all disabilities are visible, that many of them are invisible. And if something's not working right, don't get frustrated take that step back, ask, hey, uh, should we just take a break for a little bit? Or how about if we talk about this tomorrow, put that off? It could make a world of difference to somebody. And uh, as someone who has been both on the, the receiving end of that and as someone who tries to, to give that, I have built so many relationships where people say, oh, you're so patient, you're this and that, and I'm not. It's just, I understand those aspects and look for those signs and that's so important. And there's so much great training that we have and so many other folks have on that, that will really help you to be a better, not only a better employee and a better leader, but just a better human being. Mm. I think that's that's a great point. Leading on from that, Stephen, actually yeah. kind of, I know that, that there are lots of people that don't think of accessibility as something that applies to them. And from, from your experience, from what you've just said, do you have any kind of any tips or advice on how we might change that mindset in in our institutions? You know, know that, that's, I think a, that's a very kind of open and big question. So, yeah, no, it is an open and big question. But I think for those of us that have accessibility or disabilities, it's it's sharing that I did a uh, a lunch and learn for my team on neurodiversity and told my story and told my daughter's story and put, hey, here's data that Six, you know, they're 60% um, more challenging to get a job, higher suicide rates, and all of these things, um, you know, that people may not be aware of, and checklists, and I had one of the persons that go, oh my God, I'm like 90% of the things on that checklist, I'm like, well, chances are you have ADD or ADHD or one of these issues, you should speak to a doctor, and not to be afraid of medication and therapy, it's not going to zone you out, it's not going to not be able to make you do your job, that I, I said, you know, if you can't C, they give you glasses. If you lose a limb, they give you an artificial limb. So if we can do that, why can't we take medication and therapy for people who are neurodiverse? It's the same thing. It's helping them because their brain can't make enough serotonin. So why do we look at that differently? And I think if people can be an advocate just to themselves and step back and realize that and share their own stories, it's just going to multiply and be a better place. And what you guys are doing, which is asking the right questions and getting people on to answer it and to share their stories so that people realize they're not alone. That's awesome. And I, I greatly respect what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Uh, I've just looked at the time and uh, we've broken our own time limit. But uh, it's, <laughs> it's, so, it's so interesting. I could uh, do this all day. This is yeah, me too. I, think I would love to come back and do some demos and show off some of the stuff at another time, which would be great. 
And um, we'll hopefully, as time goes on, we'll find a time slot that works better because I'd love to do a show and answer questions from your audience too. But uh, I just came back from traveling. I've been out. So three things, accessibility, uh, microsoft.com slash accessibility, um, adoption.microsoft.com. And if people want to connect with me, they can do it either via Twitter at Stephen L. Rose. That's with a PH because I was born in Canada and I'm a British citizen too. And uh, aka.ms slash inside MS Teams. That's my show inside Microsoft Teams where we interview customers and we delve into this a little bit, but you're making me think I may need to do a whole show on it next season. So I appreciate it. And if I do, I'd love to have you guys on to talk about it and be my guest if you're willing. Oh, we'd love it. It'd be awesome. Absolutely. All right. I think we may have to do that. And that's our choice to do lots of cool demos and stuff like that and bring that out. And I'll see if I can get our head of accessibility to join us too. I think it'd be an awesome show.